What is up everybody, Sven Diesel here with Sportsman's Warehouse. We're gonna be tying up a unweighted olive scud. This is a really fun pattern for me to fish on the still water. If I was fishing on a river, I definitely would weight it down. We're gonna start here with a scud hook. This is a uh, size 12, a TMC 2457. We're gonna be using some UTC 140 denier in black. And for the uh, um, wire ribbing, we're gonna be using a brassy in a size uh, in copper. If you're, you know, size the wire according to what you're gonna be using. We're gonna throw some scud back, eighth inch. If you're going bigger than this, they make a wider size. Uh, if you're going smaller, you could also uh, trim it down. Now for the body, we're gonna blend two. I like putting a little flash in there. This is uh, Dark Olive by Arizona Simi Seal, uh, John Romer's dubbing. And we're gonna throw in some ice dub uh, with the golden brown. For the tail, we're gonna be using some guinea feathers. Uh, you can also use mallard or whatever you have handy. And then we're going to go ahead and get started right here behind the hook eye. I'm leaving a little bit of a gap and I'm just gonna use touching wraps as I work my way down. And once I get about halfway, I'm gonna Go ahead and uh, trim off that tag end. You can rip it off like I did or trim it out. And then we're going to add about, oh, uh, it's hard to tell. It depends on the size of the hook. I usually do about five to eight fibers coming off the rear here. And we're gonna look at the curvature of these fibers because you want them to curve up. You can use your scissors and manipulate them, but you can see how there's that natural curve. And so I'm gonna go ahead and lay those right on the top of the shank and I'll do a pinch wrap by throwing that thread in between my fingers and then I'll keep that pulled up at an upward angle and you can see how with about four wraps it's easy to manipulate how long I want it and I'm going to go well into the bend on this and so I'm going to have those be a little bit longer but just keep those fibers on the top of the hook shank and I like to adjust my hook so I can get into that bend really nice without having to you know, worry about the hook point breaking my thread and we'll go down about to there and that looks about good those fibers look perfect because you got to remember we're going to have a pretty buggy body and those will blend into those fibers when wet so uh, let's trim out the uh, butt ends and we'll proceed to the next step of tying in our wire now this is the unweighted version as mentioned if you were going to do uh, this in rivers i definitely would throw some lead wraps uh, maybe this will be a future video of doing a weighted version and we're going to, uh, uh, you could also throw a tungsten bead on the head or in the body, but we're going to tie in this copper wire and twist it over to the side to make it easier for our first wrap. And I'll, I'll move my thread back to that point. And at this point, I like to adjust it back because we're going to be uh, working our thread up towards the hook eye and I don't want it sliding off and potentially having material come undone. So we're gonna take that scud back here and it's going to, sometimes it's a little difficult to grasp the, the threads kind of walking over. I, I'm missing it here. So let me show you a little trick here. I'm gonna go ahead and spin my bobbin so that the thread is twisted. And what's gonna happen is it's going to naturally wanna adhere to my fingers. Now, if it goes the, um, if it bends the other way, then you're spinning it the wrong way. So uh, we'll, we'll proceed to pull that scud back with a little bit of tension and then we'll proceed to get our thread up towards the uh, the hook eye after we make a dubbing loop to put in our body. So I like to do mine at the midpoint here because I'm going to wrap backwards and then come up towards the hook eye. And what we're going to do is get our scud back and our wire secured back here with a little hair clip and, or if you have a material clip that works too. I'm going to make about a four inch dubbing loop and then we will uh, insert our little weighted dubbing tool here and leave it open. That's a little trick I do, I just shove it in the material clip. And then we will go ahead and do a, a whip finish here so that we can use the rotary feature of our Peak Vice. This is the Peak Rotary Vice. Really makes it easy to uh, dub, um, you, you know, do bodies and such. So um, let's go ahead and get this body ready and we'll take out a smidge of that ice dub. I'll grab a slightly bigger clump of this dark olive blend, which has a little bit of flash. I just like mine to be a little bit brighter. And we'll go ahead and mix them by stacking it on top of each other twisting it in a noodle and then stacking it again. Uh, but for the last stack, I'm not gonna twist them together. I'm gonna leave it a little bit flat. And by putting one of the thread in my uh, material clip, it's easy to just grab it and insert this into the dubbing loop. I'll go ahead and spread it out. And you can see how these fibers are really, really long. Uh, we can always trim them. I, I just like the stiffness of this uh, semi-seal blend. And I think it turns out really nice. So let's go ahead and spin this up. Uh, don't have to be super, super tight, but tight enough that we are uh, securing those materials so they don't come loose when we brush it out because we're going to be 
pretty aggressive with this, um, brushing it out to make it, you know, imitate the, the legs and the body. And so we'll go ahead and just put my finger on the one side of the uh, dubbing loop. That way as I'm, I'm brushing these, it's not giving the full force. It's kind of helping protect the dubbing loop since we just have thread here. And then I'm gonna start with about uh, one or two wraps on top of each other. And then I'll work my way back, avoiding that hook point. And then as we get to the bend, I'm going to now proceed to wrap up and over the wraps I already did, creating kind of a hump, which would be similar if you're weighting it with some lead wraps, you wouldn't need to do that as much. And then we're gonna make sure we leave enough here to close off the fly and finish the fly. You don't wanna crowd the eye on this because that could get really nasty with the wire and the uh, scud back. So we'll go ahead and close this uh, or tie off this uh, uh, dubbing loop here with a couple wraps behind a couple wraps in front I'll trim it out and then we are well into almost finishing this fly now I'm gonna just clean this up just a tad bit makes it a little bit easier to see where we're gonna be finishing and I'll do a little half hitch here um, and get it out of my way so that we can easily use the rotary function to uh, wrap our wire I think it's a lot easier uh, you can just you know keep your vise stationary and, and palmer it around. I say I think I trap less fibers when I'm I'm using the rotary function. So we'll pull over that scud back and um, we'll go ahead and do a wrap over and then a couple wraps on top of it. And then here's a trick I like so it doesn't come undone. I'm going to wrap back over that tag end so that it's uh, folded back over itself. And we'll do another half hitch here to secure that and that way it's not going to come undone. There's nothing worse than starting to wrap your wire and next thing you know your scud back pops out and you have to stretch it or you know there's a bunch of different ways you can fix it but it's a lot easier if you don't have to try and fix it. So um, make sure that your scud back is mostly on top as much as possible. It helps but you can always use your fingers to kind of twist it around. So here we're just going to work our fibers through um, that little bunch of uh, bugginess. You don't want to have that uh, coming up and over and you can see how by manipulating it it's a little bit easier just to twist it around and then I kind of reposition my scud back so it's on top and you want these wraps to be semi-even as you come up and around but it really is to make it a little bit more durable and uh, uh, segmentation of the body than anything else and then I'll do a full wrap right here around my my head potentially so that we uh, have something to tie off and it will be built into the, the bulk of our thread uh, on the whip finish. So it's nice and secure. It's not gonna come undone because I think the wire is what makes this kind of a bulletproof uh, fly. So um, go ahead and give a nice little coverage there on the head so that you don't see the wire. You don't need to get too big. We're gonna make it a little bit bigger with some resin and then we'll go ahead and uh, do a three turn whip finish and we are almost done. Uh, the last steps, of course, is going to be making a uh, resin over the top. We also want to brush it out real nice and trim the fibers since uh, these are a little bit long for this hook size, but that's why we can trim them. So uh, I'm going to apply a little bit of uh, Loon Flow here um, just to that uh, the whip finish, just to make it really secure. Trying my, my best, and you always got to be careful of this, not to get it in your hook eye because there's nothing worse than being on the river on a cold windy day and next thing you know you can't uh, th put your you know tip it through the hook eye so now we're going to use our, our little uh, peak tool here and shove it in between the hook gap and really really brush these trap fibers out uh, you can brush it out and spend all day you can get a pick it uh, doesn't make a huge difference uh, i just want to get most of them out and going to each side so that when i resin the back it's going to solidify which way they're going and so we'll go ahead and trim this out i like to just pull them all forward so that they're a little bit shorter in the front a little bit longer in the back so as mentioned earlier as this gets wet some of those fibers are going to flow into those um, uh, guinea feathers in the back or guinea fibers I apologize uh, and make it just really really nice now this is unweighted uh, as mentioned so i'm going to be fishing this on still water which I think is really good for a uh, slow sink. And we're just gonna use some Loon Thin here, and I'm going to apply a little bit here on the back side of this uh, hook uh, on, on the scud back so that it's kind of gonna seep down into those fibers. 
if you get a little bit, there we go, a little bit into the tail, I think it makes for a better transition. But basically get that hump. And this, I think, also provides a little bit of translucency, uh, if that's a word, that uh, will help reflect some of that wire and some of that ice that we put in there. And we'll go ahead and cure that up. And that is the unweighted scud. The real advantage to this is the materials you can mix up and make combos is endless. Um, this is the unweighted version. You may also weight it, and uh, it just fishes and catches fish if you got scuds in the water. So tie some up and add them to your box. Thanks for watching.